Good, good afternoon, after wherever you are in the good world. Afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, wherever yeah. you are. Welcome back to Cannon Fodder, <laughs> the channel for Arsenal fans literally all over the world. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We've got another full house, and it is the second part of the Easy Talk about Unai Emery and some of his um, decision-making so <laughs> early in the second season at the Arsenal. There's, like, um, there's some familiar faces in Andrew from uh, Dar Square to Wear. Andrew, how are you feeling? How are you these days? I'm a lot better now, thank you. Yeah, after being a bit poorly last week, um, we're on the early, early part of this week. But yeah, fighting fit, thankfully. Thanks for having me on. No worries, no worries. And we've got IG, a.k.a. Indian Guna. How are you? All good, all good. Brilliant. And we've got another newbie. Two shows on a trot. Newbie? There's nothing and... new about me. <laughs> oh, all right, okay. Well, you're new to the show anyway. We've not had you on before. We've got Glenn from around the corner in New Hello. York. Yes, Glenn. <laughs> I, I'm very glad to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation. No worries, no worries. So you know what? Let's let's get into it. Let's get into it. The first thing we wanted to talk about actually was um, about Unai Emery's um, his eleven. The, the the players, that person we think should form part of his first team. Now this is irrespective of players were signed or players that are injured. Which players should form? his best 11. And I'm going to go to um, Glenn, who's just around the corner. Glenn, who do you think Unai Emery should play in his first 11? For me, it's really simple. You take Pepe, Aubameyang, Lacazette, and Ceballos, and then he can tinker around all he effing wants. Simple as that. That's, that's my starting 11 right there. I don't want to tie the coach's hands, manager, whatever the hell he's called. Get those four in. Against top six, at least. Every game. Okay. Okay. Nice and simple. Um, IG, you're 11. Uh, I believe, uh, yeah, uh, Nicholas Pepe, Aubameyang, and Lacazette, front three. Uh, behind, I think, uh, defensively, I think 4-3-3 would be a very good formation going through this season. And I think uh, centrally, the midfield should be creative. So, yes, that is a bios. Uh, towards the left, uh, we need something uh, like uh, uh, a defender that can play much deeper role if because uh, I think we have not seen how Kieran Tierney performs. And we all know, uh, I think even in the right hand, I think right hand side, I, I would uh, expect Lucas Torreira to play more deeply because if Hector comes in, we know how defensively vulnerable Hector is. So I think uh, that would be also be a problem. So uh, left uh, left uh, midfield, I would want either Willock or uh, Genduzi or, or towards the right side, I would expect Torreira to start. Uh, and uh, the fullbacks, uh, Tierney on the left, Hector on the right, because we have really missed Hector, uh, the attacking uh, mentality of Hector Bayerin. Uh, probably uh, towards the last end of the uh, season, I think we, we missed him a lot. And uh, centrally, I would like to see Chambers and, I, I don't know, I think uh, one of Papa or Luis, because both are very much, very much uh, vulnerable to mistakes. They will definitely create those mistakes of so one of them. And uh, 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 Bird Leno, the keeper, that's an obvious choice. Oh, 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 I want to say something. So, I'm yeah. also I'm also in favor of the four two three one. Sorry about that, Andrew. <laughs> Go for Andrew. I think it's, I think it's your turn, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's great. Well, I um, think well, it's quite. I'll quickly run through my best eleven. It'd be Leno, uh, Ainsley, Mike, and Nars until Bella in his back. I'd uh, uh, instantly Crabbers until Holding's back and fully fit <laughs> uh, alongside Louise, and then Klasnac, unfortunately, until Tierney is be uh, back fully fit as well. Then midfield, Quinduzi, Sabios, and Willock, and then up front, I would have Laka, Pepe, and Alba. But what I would have instead of a um, it's still going to be a four-three-three, but I would have a four-three-one-two. They have um, maybe controversially, I'd have yeah, Laka, uh, Lacazette and Aubameyang because we need Lacazette and Aubameyang in the box. We can't have them wide. They ain't making use of um, their talents. They are goal-scoring machines, 
they need to be in the box. So I, when we're backs that we want on the pitch, Bellerin and um, Tierney, they will provide the width. So they will be able to get the balls in the box. And we need to get the ball forward quickly, which is why we need to have Willett, Guendouzi and Ceballos on the pitch for their pace, their youth, their um, talent getting forward. Um, they want to get forward with the ball. They're fearless. So they'll get the front ball, uh, they get the ball to the front three as quickly as possible. But if we've got Pepe sitting behind the front two, then he is utilising his best talents as well by getting the ball, dribbling and running at pace at the, uh, at the scaring the life out of them. And he can either then choose to shoot, slip one of the other front two in um, and use his tricks, use his full bag of tricks because people play from the right, but he's just as comfortable playing through the middle. So that solved the problem of getting the front three into the team and making the best use of the front three. Because we all saw what Lacazette can do against Tottenham in the 44th minute. Um, but he is not the best distributor of the ball. He's not the greatest at passing. He actually, a lot of his passing went wayward in the previous um, match against Spurs. And I'm not uh, knocking him for that at all. It's not his strength. It's not his, um, his, his game. He's not the Firmino type that people have been going on and on and on about saying, could he play the Firmino role? That is much more suited. If you, Think about it logically. It's much more suited to either having Earl or Pepe, and we uh, we all know who we want rather having either Urzel or Pepe. It's got to be Pepe at the moment. So I think it utilizes have, a lot of his skills. Glenn, go. You want to say something? I just want to see. I just want to say, and that's why when Andrew does a tweet, I, I'm it's, I'm always reading it first. I love the fact that you have Caballos in the middle helping with that link up play. Effing love it. Oh, can I curse? I mean, I don't know. You, no, you, you can't. No, you I, can't. I can't. I can't no, curse. Sorry. No. Sorry. All, right, all right. I won't curse. Did anyone ever tell you you look like you should own a store on Sesame Street? I already do. Oh, wait. oh you? <laughs> <laughs> right next to Mr. Hooper. You're so friggin' nice. I knew there was no cursing on this show. You're too friggin' nice. <laughs> Sunny day. Go I ahead. Think, I think... I'm... I think we I think we need to go four ah 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 three ah 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 three ah, 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 ah. <laughs> What what letter is this Touché. show brought to you by? Touche. Cannon fodder is brought to you by the letter A. <laughs> Arsenal. Getting back to football now. Uh, Andrew, um wasn't the main reason why um Lacazette um Play better against Liverpool because Danny Sabias was 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 on there to link up the play. The link up, he was the main link between the midfield and the attackers. And don't we exactly, do yeah. we not need Torreira in the midfield to be some kind of defense for the defense because the defense cannot defend? Because I saw in your tweet you had Gwendozi, Willock, and Sabias, but you didn't mention Torreira. Um, I'm just a little bit concerned about his form at the moment. I've got nothing against Torreira whatsoever, but he hasn't been utilised properly um, so far this season. He can't play further forward. Do you know what? I, I, I don't know whether it was um, Amy Lawrence that I got this from. So please, um, you know, bear with me, but it, I'm sure it was her. But when we actually bought Torreira, it was... Um, a Sven Mislintat uh, find, obviously, as we know, and he found him on the back of, uh, looking for a Kante, basically, another Kante. He put every single skill and an attribute of Kante in she, little box of tricks, and out popped Torreira's name. And that's the way we should utilise him if we're going to play him. And uh, just sitting in front of the back four, and not doing much else, really. Just protect, just protecting, mopping up, being a cleaner. He shouldn't be. Every 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 great team has got a. It's, it's like a well-oiled machine, and every of that machine knows what they're going to be doing. And we need to be, be working like that because that's how Liverpool are so successful. Because they haven't got world-class midfielders in their team. They're all quite 
average, but they work together and they know their role. Um, so we need to do that if we're going to utilise players like Torreira, because otherwise he's going to be running around like a headless chicken and people are going to wonder what on earth he's doing there. Um, so, But at the moment, I'm a little bit concerned that he may have a little bit of a hangover from the summer exertions. Uh, he may still, to some extent, have... Um, to some extent, still really be getting to grips with the, the individual. Um, each human has got... <laughs> It can't just be the same, you know. He's might some people take longer than others to um, acclimatize to that as well. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just guessing, but he needs to play in front of the back four if he is going if he's going to be in the team. But at the moment, I don't see him in the strongest eleven right at this moment in time, personally. Well, uh, I, you do realize, Andrew, that you answered your own question inside your answer there. He's been not played right. He was bombing down the wing, Terrera, we're talking about, bombing down the wing last game. He has, he's got to sit back and play some defense. And you said it yourself, so I'm not going to carry on too long. But I don't buy this, oh, he's tired and all that. How old is he, like 23? 23. Andrew, Andrew, you remember when you were 23? You could freaking do anything. I know I could. Uh, I don't I don't buy this uh, tired I'm stuff. So You're a <laughs> You're a Superman at 23. Oh my right, God. IG, you IG, 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 you look 23. Yeah, I look 23, yeah, but I am 27. But... Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's over then. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, IG, what, what, what are your thoughts on, on Torreira? I know that's going to be something that we're going to be speaking about a little bit later on, but... In, in the, the North London derby, he was too many times ahead of Pepe on the right-hand side, not providing enough cover for Asian Metal Niles on the right-hand side. Is is that a lack of discipline, or is that something that Una Emery has instructed him to do, to go up, leave the back door open, and try and support the front three? Uh, I think... Uh... Uh, to answer your question, the whole uh, whole and sole idea lies on the tactics. I think uh, uh, we have to go back a little. I think for Uruguay, Torreira plays a two midfielder role. That means uh, even for Uruguay, he plays a. Uh, I mean, the whole tactics is about two midfielders. When whenever uh, I think uh, Torreira's uh, potential can be unlocked when you play a back three. You see, when you in last season when uh, uh, Unai Emery. Played a back three. There were there were two uh, defensive midfielders. One was Chaka. Next was Torreira. Torreira was really really good because he was not being given the license to go forward and try to you know uh, do some antics, do some heroics. And the problem is in a four three three. If you uh, I think in the first half Genduzi was given the uh, uh, role of uh, uh, keeping backtracking Sead Kolasinac, and I think Torreira was given the license to go forward. In the second half, it was Granit Xhaka who was told to uh, play towards the left-hand side and go back. And Genduzi and Torreira were told. I think the license was given by Unai Emery. So if you're playing a 4-3-3, 4-3-3 is always about attack. You just have one midfielder. Obviously, uh, you can't expect Xhaka or Genduzi to play like a Kante. Truly, yes. And uh, it, it totally depends upon the system. And uh, when you are playing against Spurs, and if you're one goal behind, that is 1-2 after the first half, obviously, you want your midfield to play a really uh, higher line. And uh, Torreira is really good when going forward. That's a different potential that has been unlocked last season towards the end. Uh, but really, that is really uh, sad to say because I think obviously uh, Ainsley and uh, it exposes a lot of lot of midfield space for uh, uh, for a team like Spurs to counter and score a goal. Truly said. But I think uh, yes, uh, uh, in terms of Torreira's potential, I think it totally depends upon the tactics that are being put forward. If it's a four-three-three, you have to see Torreira play more centrally and more deep like a play, uh, playmaker role but if you want Genduzi to do that I think you can expect only uh, the other two midfielders to have a license to go forward mm. you can't expect uh, them to backtrack a lot Glenn, Glenn do, do you agree with the sentiments do you, do you think it's the fact that Una Emery has instructed Lucas Torreira to be to go forward rather than be a defensive midfielder well, do you think it's lack of discipline or he's just told Torreira go forward 
It's not a lack of discipline. It's what it's what uh, you know, Dr. Frankenstein Unai Emery is doing with the team. You know, he's he's just he's fiddling around too much with it. Mm-hmm. Last year, when, when Terreras, you know, was playing great for us, he was playing defensively. You know, and, and I was comparing him to the Terminator. He, I friggin' love the guy. He's one of my favorite players, mm-hmm. and it infuriates me when I see him bombing down the wing ahead of Pepe. I'm like, what? The? Boy, I almost said a bad word there. Um, so yeah, I, that's it's it's Unai Emery, and and by the way, for those of you that are saying every time you criticize Unai Emery, you say, "Oh, you want him fired?" No, I effing don't. You can criticize the manager, and that is my way too long answer. Okay, thank 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 you thank you thank you for uh, not uh, cursing. <laughs> Listen, I, I don't want to. And to keep in short. I don't. <laughs> I don't want to set fire to the the blue touch paper, but. Um, you would have probably seen on on, on a Wednesday we had a, a, a debate which was not supposed to include Meza Erzul. <laughs> he got included <laughs> by someone who, uh, well, at Richard. Richard's in the chat this evening, just controlling the, the chat. And um, he, he, Meza Erzul got, got mentioned because Richard said he would like Meza Erzul to leave Arsenal Football Club. Glenn, I know you put some comments on Cameron Foyer TV, and I wasn't sure. On what side of the argument you stood? Are you uh, for or are you against Mesut Ozil remaining at Arsenal? That thing I put in the comments section is because somebody was complaining about his 350k a week. And uh, I said that Arsenal panicked because we were losing Alexis Sanchez at the same time. And we couldn't lose both of them. And they just said, how much money do you want? And who's going to say no to that? Yeah. You know, I, who's going to say, you, what, 350,000? No, 250,000 is fine. Don't worry about it. Come on. Forget and yes, I would like to see Ozil leave, like everyone else except his family. <laughs> but uh, he's here, you know. So I'm kind of looking forward to maybe Sabios in the midfield, you know, have Ozil and the other three up front, and just see what kind of craziness that brings. You know, you know, Sabios' defense is underrated. He can hold his own. He's not, you know, he's not Ozil. You know. So oh, I know. I know. Okay. I, know. I mean, look, look at the um, the assist he got for um Abamian. Mm-hmm. You know, he, it was it was his turnover. He went to get the ball back, and I, I'm, again, I'm not going to turn this into an Urzel bashing, but I couldn't envisage Mesut Urzel trying to go in for a tackle to try and get <laughs> the ball back. But yeah, uh, and Andrew, I think I know which fence you stand on with the Mesut Urzel argument. I think you would like to see him out of the door. Am I right or am I wrong? I am. Um... I, I, I uh, when he's on his day, he's amazing. But his day was, I think his last day was about five, four or five years ago. Um, I, just, I just love to see him back to his best in an Arsenal shirt, but I can't see it. And we can't afford any any carriers in, you know, we can't afford to carry anyone in the team. So for me, his time is up. But I'm sad to say that, if I'm honest. I don't want to see the back of him, but I think we have to because the youngsters we've got in the team now offer so much more than he does. Now, him, in little pockets, he's got he's, he's amazing little uh, touches and which can change a game. But I think the other players that we've got ahead of him offer so much more than just those little bits of touches throughout a whole 90 minutes. And we need we need more endeavour. We need more effort. We need more um, pace. We need more legs. We need more urgency in the team. And he can't offer us that. And why also has a player got the right to pick and choose what games he goes and plays? Uh, he, he seems to be uh, no Newcastle's a bit too far away for me, so I can't be bothered to go to Newcastle. So you guys go up there, and I'll sit back and play Fortnite. <laughs> Can I, I, want, I, I, I need to say two quick things. One, I was defending Ozil right up until the Baku game. All right. And defending Ozil is a full time job. Uh, and he, he lost me after the Baku game. And Andrew, I love you, but I think that's being unfair because you're just guessing that. Uh, and I hate sticking up for Ozil because I want him gone. I think it's unfair of you to say, he said, uh, sorry, Una, I'm going to stick around here. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to go there. I think that's a little unfair. We don't know that. We don't know that. <laughs> well, defending Ozil requires him a high-caste uh, he receives, actually. 
I'm sorry, I missed what you guys <laughs> said because you both talked at the same time. Uh, I said, so, uh, I think defending Ozil requires higher wages than what Ozil receives from us. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you say, Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just said that you must understand my sarcasm. Oh, 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 sorry. That British sarcasm, I'm still trying to get a handle on that. Uh, uh, you, you, you must be um, very good at multitasking because it looks like you're umpiring some kind of um, American sport there whilst you're actually taking part. <laughs> you made me snort. Are you happy? You made me snort. <laughs> Oh dear. This is my right. this is my vape cigarette. <laughs> All right, let's let's bring some order <laughs> to this, this live stream. Um so before we continue to, to the next topic, because I think we've already kind of spoken about the second topic, which was supposed to be about Lucas Torreira. So we've covered it already. Um Glenn, where can people find you on social media? Now's right. your time to promote yourself. Right. Well, I don't know how I'm not good enough to point to the thing underneath me. You can see it right there. <laughs> okay. Can't you? Glenn, yeah. at Glenn, D-I-T-M. I don't care about promoting me. Go down to the other guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that, for the, uh, Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Andrew, and we can find you on Twitter as well as YouTube at Dial Square to Wear. Yep. Yeah, I don't know YouTube actual. Uh, you, I haven't gotten a, a, you know, a fancy URL yet, so just search for... <laughs> From Dial Square to Wear on YouTube. Um, I've got um, a podcast that's on all the main platforms like iTunes and Spotify, etc. I've got a new episode coming out tonight, a bit later on, about an hour after or so after the show. I'll, I'll get it finished. And Glenn, you were talking a lot a short while ago, and I've got a quite a big section where I, I wouldn't call it a rant, but um, I've got a few things to say about Unai Emery on the, this episode that I'm going to be publishing later on today so you might want to have a listen to that oh i'm looking forward to that absolutely okay well, <laughs> and ig <laughs> aka indian guna where can we where can we find you uh you can uh, find me i i have an uh, i have a youtube channel named uh indian guna where i make videos for arsenal uh except for that you can also find me on twitter uh, my name is ashish shetty you can uh, find me on twitter as well but i i actually uh, just uh, message Canon Fodder TV on Twitter. That's the only uh, uh, thing that I do with Twitter. But other than that, uh, I think I'm very much quite active in my YouTube and the community uh, tab on my YouTube channel. So Indian Gunnar, you can find me on YouTube. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, sorry, go on, Glenn. Go on. Uh, no, I was okay. just going to say, you, Indian, Indian, you need to provide a link because you said your name and I can't even pronounce it, much less spell it to find you. So you got to put a link down there for me. Yeah, I, so I will I, put the you link can, in you, the box at the end of the, the live stream. We, we usually do that. Um, but yeah, I'll put the link in the comments box at the end of the, the live stream. So let me get into the chat. There's been um, a little bit of a... Um, some life in the chat. We've got Ray from Arsenal Fan Circle. He says, why does it seem, after well over a year, Emery does not yet know his best 11? And best midfielders combination yet? So, is it a fact that Unai Emery still doesn't know his best 11? Who are you asking? It's a, to you, Glenn. Oh, okay. <laughs> to you. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm not inside his head. But a lot of what he does does not make sense, and he does not seem to learn from his mistakes. Uh, his midfield setups, his defensive setups, his submissive setups, like against Liverpool. I know I'm in the minority with that, but I thought it was a submissive lineup. It's, you know, should we ask Liverpool to leave out a couple of their best players too? Since, you know, that's what we did. Give me a freaking break. I almost cursed again. Um, uh, he, I can understand some tinkering, but you know, by now I'd like to see more set lineups. But, but Glenn, is it a fact that he's probably too scared or still does not trust the players that he's got there? Well, because if you're talking, I, in, in, sorry, go on, go on. If, you, if you're saying he doesn't trust his back four, yeah, that's reasonable, but you still need link up play. You can't, you know what? You, you can't do like Crystal Palace where he threw El Nenny and uh, Guendouzi out there, or, or even what he did against Tottenham. You just cannot do that. You need the link up play. Get Ceballos or Caballos, I'm not exactly sure how to say it, in midfield there, playing the number eight. Hmm. Okay. 
Uh, I've got another one here uh, from uh, Richard. Uh, Ray, don't forget, Emery has had injuries in the time that he has been here. But I think he does know he's best 11. Then why doesn't he play them? Why doesn't he play them? I don't Andrew. want to hog all the answers. Yeah, thank you. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. You want me to talk about Emery? Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've been really, I've not been his biggest fan since day one. I think I've made that perfectly clear, but I am really, uh, I've, got, I've got some grave concerns about him. I really have. I'm not, I don't want to give too much away from my, uh, from my podcast later because I want everyone to listen to it, obviously. But however, I think it's been hugely frustrating the way that um, we approach the Liverpool match and the Spurs match. We all wanted to see the front three against Spurs for the first time. And so he, he gave with one hand and he took away <laughs> with another by playing a really negative midfield and not supporting the front three. I don't know. I mean, we all know he's got injuries, you know. Every, every team's got injuries. It's just the way you cope with it. And I think I um, I was thinking, actually, driving home, because so this is how sad I am. I was just thinking about the, the difference between Liverpool's midfield quality and our midfield quality, what we've got available to us now. And I genuinely only think that the only midfielder that Liverpool have got who you could say is potentially at the sort of the world class stage. Um, oh God, his name got completely out of my head. The Brazilian uh, Fabinho, sorry, Fabinho. I nearly forgot his name then for a second. All the other ones, like I mentioned earlier, are decent midfielders, but that's about it, really. I mean, like I said, I mean, James Milner's probably about 48 years old. I think um, <laughs> Henderson, most of the Liverpool fans don't like him. Um, you know, and I think if you compare our midfielders to theirs, I think we're, we're short. They've got um, Fabinho and we've got uh, Granite Xhaka. And that's the main difference. So we need um, someone to take the mantle of like a, a Fabinho role. Now we have got Torreira, like we mentioned earlier, but he's he can't help it, of course. But he's a very, very small in stature, and I think that does detract from his. Uh, uh, it's just I don't know the way he can sort of be on the pitch. Really, I think it, when he when he saw him against the Spurs midfielders who are giants, he just seemed like a you know small child. And I think we just need someone with a bit more stature and presence there, like. Like a Vieira, obviously. We all know that we've been wanting a Vieira. But do you know what? I, I genuinely, and I've put this on Twitter several times, I think that Joe Willock, not yet, obviously, but in a year or two's time, with two a couple of seasons under his belt, he's going to be the closest we could have for a Vieira replacement. I love the guy. I absolutely love the guy. And I think he could be a true box-to-box -box player and have real presence and stature in the centre of the park, when he bulks up a bit, when he gets more muscle, uh, and he's got much more used to the, the power of the pace of the Premier League, I think he's got a lot to offer, but he's not there yet, obviously. So that's one what we need in the uh, next window. Someone to replace Raka <laughs> for a start. But I, I digress there, I've got quite a lot, which I do apologise for. However, Emery has been massively um, frustrating me with regards to putting the wrong personnel out on the pitch um, and not going for it. Because th this is the main point I want to make just quickly before we move on. This is his last season. Factually, this is his yeah. last season. Yeah. So why does he not just go for it? What's he got to lose? He could either go down as a legend by really uh, having a fantastic season and, and going for it and scoring lots of goals or he could just go out with a whimper. So, why does he play negative tactics? Why should it be that we, our opponents are going to do to us? Why don't we let, we let them worry about what we're going to do to them? We've got so many good players and we need to show the league that we've got so many good players 
and play to our strengths. And our strength is not defence, it is attack. So go out, attack the teams, and let's see, just see how far it could take us. Because I'd much rather see that than a whimpering end to the season like we had last season. I just, I just do not want to see that again. So if it's, this is last season, he's got to go and try and get a new contract. Just go and do it by playing attacking football and playing to our strengths. Please. Okay. Um, someone, uh, someone needs to dump a, a bucket of cold water over me because everything Andrew just said was friggin' awesome. My head is going to explode with agreement there. It's just, uh, Andrew, right effing on. Okay. Sorry. All right. I, I just had to say that. Andrew, that was, you've got a fan there. Um, that that was brilliant. IG, um, do you think um, the power of that be, B and I, and maybe um, Raul said any, will probably. If, if Una Emery doesn't fix up, if he doesn't really wake up, do you think his tenureship at Arsenal may come to a, a, a very quick and nasty end? <laughs> nasty. Uh, I, I, I think uh, one thing I want to be very much clear that Arsenal fans are definitely turning out to be uh, Chelsea fans. Because I think uh, many of them are definitely trying to turn up on the manager. They, stick, they stuck with the manager for 22 years. And it took them, uh, I think, since... 2006 to 2018, I think, the 2017 season, it took them that much long time to actually get up and actually throw out Wenger. But I think if you if you want to criticize Unai Emery, you need to understand what malaise he had uh, uh, inherited from Wenger last season. The wealth of midfield that he had, he had Aaron Ramsey on his disposal and Aaron Ramsey left off. And uh, uh, he had Mikitarian. We all know what, what kind of a failure he was in the replacement of Alexis Sanchez. Uh, imagine uh, losing a, a beast of a winger to an attacking midfielder who's not even, who was not even uh, uh, at a very brilliant form for Manchester United. And not only that, I think defence was always a problem for Arsenal. We never had a proper uh, defence. So the only thing that we could uh, ride upon was the midfield. And uh, we all know that uh, we have a lot, lot of youngsters coming this season. So... See, that does not, uh, see, uh, when you're paying 72 million for Nicolas Pepe, that does not mean that you just lift the player up, put him in that winger position, and he's going to just score those 23 goals for Arsenal straight away. I think it's first four games, we've got seven points. And I think, yes, the manager is trying a lot, lots of combinations. He tried a 4-3-3. He tried a, he tried a, a midfield diamond against Liverpool because he wanted to be <coughs> defensive enough. Obviously, he was trying to show a lot of respect for Liverpool by bringing in more and more uh, bodies into the box. That worked for the first 42 minutes. It's just that Socrates switched off and uh, the first goal went in of Matip. And second time, it was an individual error of uh, David Luiz. The third one, David Luiz could not could not tackle uh, Salah because then it would have been 10 men and that would, be, would have been much worse because we would have lost probably not by 3-1, but 5-1. It would have happened because Firmino was lurking every time, every time inside. So, to answer your point, I think, no, I think Unai Emery, according to me, he doesn't deserve to be sacked, even if he fails this season. Only because I think even if you get some amount of players, you need to know that there are some dead woods that are just uh, leeching that wages. And you know that you cannot play them because these are landmines. If you play them, definitely they are going to make sure that uh, two extra players will play for the opposition rather than playing for Arsenal. So, uh, to answer your question, I think Unai Emery is rightfully criticised. He should be criticised if he's doing it wrong. But uh, for us fans sitting outside and just thinking that, yeah, come on, we know Sebayo should play an attacking midfield, yes. But you need to understand that Sebayo has not played in the Premier League. Hmm. He has not faced Tottenham. He has not faced Tottenham, who has actually reached the finals of last season's Champions League. And on the counter, they are best. They are best. You need to understand that as well. And you also need to understand that Nicolas Pepe also has not played in the Premier League. So, obviously, I think Unai Emery has taken his time uh, introducing Nicolas Pepe. You need to also understand that uh, from the under-23 under team, Willock has come in. Reese Nelson has had uh, a good season last season at the Bundesliga at Hoffenheim. So, it is just that he's trying to find out. I think this is the same reason why I think uh, Unai Emery was dependent more on Obama and was not playing Lacazette. Uh, was not giving Lacazette a lot of game time last season. And towards the end, uh, I think towards the middle of the season, he realized that he can play Aubameyang and Lacazette up front. So that is the best team. I think the best team, I believe, after this international break, when the fullbacks, 
the original people who should represent arsenal at that position come back i think we can definitely talk about the strongest 11 and also about unai emery's potential because he has been actually uh, put back by the players that are exactly right now at certain positions at his disposal i believe his players may have let him down but not as a manager i don't think so i think he deserves uh, to not have a, a second chance all right so before i go into the chat and before i go to andrew cuz i know andrew wants to say something you you said that there are, there's um some dead wood players still at arsenal who need to be gotten rid of can i push you to mention those names or you do you not want to mention those players who need to leave arsenal ig IG? Uh, I think I think uh, in terms of mediocrity, Granit Xhaka. In terms okay. of uh, not doing the defensive work, Mesut Ozil and Sayar Kolasinac. Uh, in terms of uh, not at all required, Skodran Mustafi. Uh, at a point to not do the defensive work, Hector Bellerin also. See, Hector Bellerin provides you a lot of luxury going forwards. Yes, but defensively, after at least fifty to sixty minutes, you can see his passes or uh, his defensive work is really shambles. he really panics when a team comes forward even 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 for a team like wolves i think uh, he can definitely uh, panic and press that panic button and throw away the ball so no i don't think so arsenal uh, uh, should look to you know uh, try to uh, get them competition on their places and i believe ainsley should come back to his position uh, i think other than that i don't think so i see any more french players maybe i think they've cut the enough deadwood but these were some of the players that i would like to mention Okay, Andrew, you wanted to say something very quickly before I go into the chat. Did you want to say something? Yeah, yeah. Well, if um, Emery recognizes that our defense is a shambles and he inherited a bad defense, and we've it's not our strength, so why does he set up defensively then? <laughs> and why is it we only look good when we play an attacking formation and we really start attacking players, attacking teams rather? You know, we looked really strong and dangerous, and we had their Liverpool's defence rocking at times in that game, only for very short periods. But it's when we actually started throwing caution to the wind, and Van Dijk looked panicked. You know, we should do that more often. Set up in an attacking formation and use attack as our form of defence, because we shouldn't be inferior. We, I'm sick to death of having an inferiority complex. Over other teams, you know, it makes me sick. You know, we're not. Well, why do we consider ourselves inferior? Yes, we're going to lose some games by playing the way that I'm. I'm saying, but I'd rather go out, you know, fighting and and swinging, you know, rather than just uh, going out with a wind break and just like conceding defeat or even walk onto the pitch because we're playing certain teams. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing because I used this as a prop to simulate water pouring over my head, and water really did pour over my head. Uh, <laughs> can I ask? Can I ask? Can I ask IG a quick question before you go to the comment section? Go for it. Because there was a lot to unpack with what he said, but I have one main question: If Unai Emery does not make top four this year, are you still defending him and saying he should stay? Yeah. uh i would like to see the situation if i uh, to answer your question broadly yes okay thank you i told you to be quick okay you are a gem i really like i think uh, i i he's, he's he's replaced mube really well yeah he has he has he has without the energy No Hennessy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sanjay. No, nobody, um, nobody can replace him ever. Just <laughs> there you go. He's irreplaceable. Right. So um, we've got a comment here from um, Sanjay Joseph, It, and I think this is the follow-on from uh, I think what Andrew was saying. In my opinion, Arsenal need a strong physical midfield figure in midfield, similar to Vieira. I like Torreira, but sometimes he has been bullied by other midfielders, and Shaka is utter flop. He can't even. Leap. <laughs> I can. <laughs> well, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I, and this is just my opinion. I think Jacques has proven that uh, the Premier League is not his thing. Yeah. It, it, yeah. That that's that's it. Simple as that. Yeah, but but you know what, Glenn? Again, in in Twitter, I've seen this week. Listen. Uh, Una Emery, he's been the target because they're saying that if you've got a coach and you've got a player who 
will guarantee you an error which is going to lead to a goal. Why does the coach continue to play this player? <laughs> yeah, again, you're That's asking... That's what I've seen on Twitter for the last few days. <laughs> Why is it a coach will constantly play a player who's going to guarantee... You know, he's going to make one big error in the game. There's, he's there's, got he's got new photos. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, <laughs> there, there is no way to answer that question because we're not inside Unai's head and no one can understand his press conferences. So, no, but it's uh, obvious, Len. It's obvious. <laughs> our, our, our player, the fact of the matter is, Granite Saka has produced more errors. Yes. Than any other player since 2016. The stats are there for him. And what makes me really annoyed is that Una Emery has come over to Arsenal with a reputation of being a coach who's very meticulous in his planning. I've been at the Emirates and I've seen in the, in the change room they've got the big screen at half time. He can review all the errors that the players are making. So why do we have a coach who's always playing one player? Who's going to guarantee you that? Guarantee that he's going to make an error, which is going to lead to a goal. Uh, like to, uh, okay, uh, can I come in? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, to, yeah, go. To, to, to add to that, I think since uh, 2017, Granit Xhaka is the most error-prone outfield yeah. player in the Premier League. He has committed seven important fouls, wherein the opposition has went on to score against Arsenal from that position. That is the highest in the Premier League since 2017. All we can do is speculate about Unai Emery and what's going on in his head. Uh, from my perspective, across all sports, not just football, I've seen managers like him. Managers that just cannot work with a team that has superstars on it. And he just, he's, he manages by tinkering too much. Because, and, and I do not, th I think that's why he failed at PSG too. He just couldn't get along with the superstars and figure his stuff out. Andrew, That's can I say something? Yeah. What you just in fact I was um it, it leads on perfectly from what Glenn just said there because what I was gonna say is I don't know whether any of you guys and uh and the viewers actually listen to the Arsenal Vision uh, um, podcast. Elliot read out a statement um I think it was on the last podcast that they had and it was a, basically a statement about Unai Emery and him playing the front three and how it's from the midfield. And um, it read like it was a Tottenham game that we just had. However, that report was from three or four years ago from his PSG days. And it's exactly the same problem that he had with PSG Playing wow. the wrong midfield to go with the front three that he had at PSG. Have a listen to it. It's amazing. It could have been a, from the from the Tottenham game. Oh, please, please repeat where you saw or read that. It's the Arsenal Vision podcast. Okay. Oh, right. okay. Thank you. Okay. I'll, I'll dish it, figure that out. Um, okay, let me get back into the chat. Uh, what have we got here? Sonia Joseph, uh, Robbie Burton was impressive in the preseason and on the 23. Also, maybe we should consider him also in midfield instead of instead of Granite Shaka. Oh my god, I would take Andrew instead of Granite Shaka. <laughs> I'll do a better job. <laughs> I, I, I would have made, I would have made that header. I would have made that header. I tell you. <laughs> and I would have put fuck off and cut the bomb as well. <laughs> <laughs> we've got Ray from Arsenal Fan Circle says that I did a video on my channel title Disconnected Lines this is how Emery set up in the North London Derby and we've got uh, Trace uh, Linton Emery is the coach he's paid to coach he does he does not know his best team he changed the team too much no excuse, no excuse he is not the man to take us where we need to be even if we make it top four ah ouch <laughs> yeah. so, so I, I agree with a lot of that, Trace. So, oh well, my God. So, so ben, are you saying that even if he gets us into top four, no, you wouldn't want him to be there beyond? Uh, next no, season? that that would be that would be unfair. I mean, unless we barely made top four, then maybe I would change my mind. But no, I said top four, and I'm sticking with that. 
Wow. Uh, then I, I would actually like to know uh, where would we want Arsenal to be under Unai Emery? What is the limit? Where where where, where do we see ourselves with Unai Emery? The topmost position. Where do we do? Like because to to, to, uh, to, to, uh, to actually say uh, as a manager in a Champions League, he has not at all uh, gone uh, gone more than uh, top sixteen, maybe. So round of 16, he's not go. Uh, the teams that he's managed, he's not broken. Uh, he's not even gone into the quarterfinals and in the Champions League. So we know what he has done previ- uh, previously in the past. Uh, he's not crossed the round of 16, whichever team he's managed with. We only know that he's the king of Europa League, but <laughs> we don't know how exactly that, that we can take uh, that he can take us in the Champions League. But first, all we are striving for is Champions League football, isn't it? So, so I so you lost the five year lead in the Champions League, and he's supposed to be a defensive coach, but he lost the five nil lead. <laughs> so, IG, are you making a case for him not not to continue, even though we get top four? Yeah, or... it's not the man to take us to the no, I, 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 I'm saying uh, in a, in the long long perspective, the way uh, his employers, that is uh, the Cronkies, have uh, uh, you know uh, employed him. What were the challenges that they put? forward to Unai Emery when he was signing for Arsenal. What what were they thinking? What was their uh, 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 objectives that needed to be clear? We, we play FIFA. Even as a manager, we get objectives, you know, to uh, manage a team. So how exactly Unai Emery was, uh, you know, uh, th- those objectives, I would really like to know exactly from an Arsenal fan, from the others as well, what do, what do they expect from Unai Emery other than top four? I think he was a transitional manager and nothing more. I think he was brought in to be the man to take over from Ben Gunn and steady the ship. I don't think he was ever seen as the man to take us on to the next level because he's not that guy. He's never showed it to be that guy. And I, I think he's going to be... I think that they've shown that they are quite a, a ruthless and forward-thinking um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, ownership. I, and I think that that's the way that they're thinking. I barely knew anything about Unai Emery when he took over. And then I, I, I read his biography and the man says that he likes criticism. He wants criticism. Well, that's all well and good. But if you're not going to learn from criticism or mistakes you make, I don't want you as Arsenal manager. But I'm not saying fire him. No. I don't want to fire him yet. But if he's not, in the, if he's not taking advantage of the situation of our competitors again this season, the way that he didn't last season, then I mean, they're looking rubbish again. You know, yeah. Chelsea and Man United are again giving us lifelines and we're not taking them already at this stage of the season. We should have won against Tottenham because they were rubbish. Tottenham were long ball merchants. They, they offered nothing at the weekend and I'm gutted that we didn't beat them because we're by far the better team. Every but time we go to Christmas, and we still be if we haven't made any kind of progress against the rivals that we had last season for top four, then I'm, uh, he needs to be asked serious questions in my book. But Andrew, I'm sorry, Andrew, but Andrew, are, are we not overreacting because it's only four games in? It's only four games in. Are we ever, I'm not. Uh, I am saying that uh, I'm not. Well, I don't want anything to be done right now. Yeah. But I'm not. The signs are not very good at the moment. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not asking for a head yet. I'm saying that if it's not, if it gets to, our, to after Christmas, because we know how fast the games come over Christmas, yeah. and we usually we've been rubbish, and that's when you get so many points on offer at Christmas time. If we get, if we start lagging behind at that point, behind teams that we should be ahead of, and we'll be dropping points to get beating with the, the squad. I mean, they've, they've given Emery everything that he wants this summer, and got rid yeah. of all the players that we didn't want. Now we haven't got our full strength team yet. I, I, I've already said that, and I, I can't wait until we get Bellerin and Tierney in the squad, and we get Hopping um, back as well after the international break. When they've got those in the team and they're actually up to full speed, if we're not start, if we're not beating the teams like like Leicester, people should say we should we need to be worried about Leicester and Wolves. With all due respect, we shouldn't be worried about Leicester and Wolves. We should be beating Leicester and Wolves. 
they could, we, there's no easy games in the Premier League. I know that. And team, you know, and um, Newcastle beat Man City last year, and, uh, and so on and so on. Blah blah blah. They are though that those sort of things do happen. But if they happen regularly, then there's a problem. I so. I feel the need to yell Amen every time Andrew talks, and with that light behind him, he looks kind of godly too. Yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I completely agree with, with what he said, <laughs> and it's and it's not overreaction with the with the uh, you know having problem with his tactics the last two games. That's not overreaction, uh, no. you know. And, and and when we get Tierney and Bellerin, this team is going to look friggin' even more awesome. So yeah, so that's, it, one, so that's what I'm saying, Glenn. Is it not an overreaction? We're only four games in. There's 38 games. It's a long old league. It's 38 games. Starting 11. No, 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 no. Then go for it. Look at his starting 11 the last two games. Look at his midfields. No, no, it's not overreaction. It's not like he, you know, he, he threw Xhaka back there, right back or whatever. Uh, you know, it was his starting 11. I, I did not like it. I said it all week before the two games that, you know, get and it's 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 not overreaction if he's picking the wrong midfield or leaving out Lacazette or leaving out Ceballos. OK, let me go back into the chat. Um, I've got one here from Richard. Uh, I will support Emery until the end of the season. But if he doesn't get us Champions League next season, then maybe we might have to say our goodbyes and bring someone else, which I think the board will be ruthless. Question, does the back four look like it's coached or drilled in position and spacing? I think he is confused at times by overthinking. Is he overthinking? Is he? Is he? Yeah, he's yeah. overthinking. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's, easy, that's the easiest question today. I, I said right over in one of the last um, podcasts I was on, I don't really think it's actually easy sell, Alex. I said that we should have a, we should have a defensive coach. Uh, uh, Liverpool have actually got a coach for throwing, for God's sake, and we haven't got a defensive coach. So we need to sort of bring in someone um, to coach our defence and make it into. Um, a, a firstly, once we get all our players back, stop rotating the defence for a start, and then get someone in to actually coach the defence. Specifically, that's what I believe anyway, because I don't believe they are getting the the correct coaches. Okay. Uh, like, what, what, what's wrong? What uh, can I weigh in? Uh, what's wrong in a defensive coach? Well, uh, Antonio Conte won the uh, won the league uh, being defensive. No, I mean we should have a, a coach for the defenders. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it just follows on from this this comment here from Tracy. I hear people say that he is a defensive coach, but we let. In goals all over the back four is not the worst in the league. Uh, they can be coached, no excuse. Can you teach old horse new tricks, Glenn? <laughs> I just look, <laughs> it, it's subjective, but I believe the Premier League is the best league in the world, and some players are just not up for it. You know, this is just so much amount of coaching you can do for a player. I mean, when Jaka came here, he was called tech gifted if you can believe that uh, so it's just a, it's just a certain it's just a, you know a certain amount of coaching you can do to a player you know and uh, that's that's just the way it is as far as I'm concerned there's one comment here for uh, IG uh, IG Wenger had 10 years of constant success so many fans allow 12 years of averageness yeah, well, yeah, but and and you know what? This is the longest we've gone without Champions League since the 1980s. You know, yes. so, so you know, Wenger. Let's let's not harp on him. All right, Unai Emery is the transition transition coach, like Andrew said. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you don't get top four. Go somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ig, do you want to say something quickly before I go into the next uh, point? Uh, well, uh, I think. Uh... It looks like that we are definitely going to turn over, uh, turn on uh, on Unai Emery if he does not get the top four. But I think, I think uh, we can look at the other teams as well. We'll definitely, uh, since the league is very, very uh, big, I think 38 games, and we expect our opponents to drop points as well. We also see that uh, Wolves have be, have been quite strengthened. 
we we see uh, teams like leicester and we also believe that in the past that we were so strong enough that these teams were blown away for uh, the likes of onri that we had the likes of pires van perse i think we had such such great talents but right now i think uh, maybe we, we may we may be not we as fans we may be not overreacting but i think uh, it's just against the fan i think uh, even if we would have lost against liverpool if we would have beaten tottenham i think we all would have been uh, uh, speaking something else about unai emery but it's just the uh, the fact that his uh, tactics could not work it's just that his lineup just didn't turn up and obviously i think uh, he's getting the criticism only for the four games but i'd like to see him more and i'd like to see the strengthened squad uh, and i'd like to see him then i'd like to criticize him then if he does not play his strongest 11 and definitely i'll uh Basham left right center okay so one more uh, comment from the chat before going to the last uh de- debating point uh, again from uh Ray from our fan circle he says Emma will be judged on his willingness or otherwise to use youth in important premier league games thinking about Willock Nelson and Andy Maitland-Niles in the midfield okay right so the, the, the last point we wanted to talk about was about the injuries the return of Bellerin holding and Tierney, who also has, actually hasn't even played for Arsenal. But actually, just looking at Bellerin and, and Holding, which of these two players do you think we've probably missed the most? I know it's subjective, but we know the defence needs a lot of help, and they, it so happens that they are both defenders. But out of the two players, Bellerin and Holding, which of these two players do you think we have missed the most, Andrew? Bellerin. Bellerin, definitely. Yeah, his creativity down the right-hand side. Um, Maitland-Niles has come on in leaps and bounds, and um, I think he should really train and learn the position of right-back because he could make a very, very, very good right-back if he uh, actually gave up being a midfielder, which, you know, I don't... I think it might be... It's just a slight myth that he ever was a midfielder, really, because he never had a run in the team as a midfielder. He's had the, uh, the old game here and there and done really well, but... If he actually learned the trade, he could be a, a brilliant right back. But um, he hasn't been. We all know that. He's had his backs, um, which is not his fault. So we've definitely missed Bellerin a lot more. Um, I cannot wait till they're back. In the, uh, they're going to be in full training in September, him and Tierney. And it looks like they're getting on great off the pitch as well when you see the behind the scenes photos and videos on the Arsenal website. are striking up a great relationship already. Uh, off the pitch, and I just really hope they strike up a good relationship on the pitch as well, because they're going to be a force to be reckoned with um, up there with Paul's fullbacks. Um, holding, I just hope that he comes back um, the same player, because he's going to add a lot of steel, and I think it's going to be a case of who's going to partner Rob Holding. He's going to be the staple in the in the defence. I agree, and I think it's going to be him and Louise. Socrates is, I, it's, I, I keep saying this, I keep saying a broken record, but 90% of every game, Socrates is a really good defender, and I like him, but we can't keep putting up with, it's same as Xhaka, we can't keep put, picking these players who keep making mistakes and costing us every time, it, because those small percentages make all the difference, and um, he makes too many mistakes for my liking, I've like as a good enough to play for Arsenal, unfortunately. Like I said, ninety percent of the time, I love him. Great, does a great job, and he's got a good attitude. But we can't keep being sentimental and keep picking the same players time after time after time when they make poor decisions, stupid mistakes. Um, so I, I cannot wait to get uh, them back. But the whole thing apparently is ready now. And I think he's just literally got to build up a bit of match fitness. So hopefully he'll get yeah. um, a couple of halves yeah. over the next couple of games and then he, he can ready to start. Yeah. Glenn. I, Bellerin, that's easy. That's an easy Bellerin. question. Uh, my, my only concern is that I feel a little bad for Rob Holding because he's still young. He's still got mistakes in him. And uh, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Um, you know, when he comes back, a lot of people are expecting, you know, what I think is going to be miracles. Uh, he, he's still got a lot to learn. His his future is limitless. I, I love what I see. But I think we're putting too much pressure on Rob Holding to be a superstar when he comes back. 
Well, well the thing is with your holding and control. Chambers, because I, I wish we'd been playing Chambers. I like Chambers. Yeah, I, I think we should have been playing Chambers this season rather than Socrates. But the good thing about holding and Chambers is that they are more of the defenders that I like, which are no-nonsense defenders. If they do see real danger, they're much more likely to put it out to Rosette rather than try and do something special with the ball and, and do some tricky passes or do a little step over. Like Defenders, that are, are really, I hate it when defenders do that. I, I always cringe. Some of them are brilliant at it. Um, but why? What? It's not your job. You're, you're there to stop the ball going in the net. So stop the ball going in the net. And, and if, it, if it's a good pass onto a midfielder, great. If there's someone bearing down on you, don't try and like dummy them or whatever. Just, just get it out. Just stick it out if you need to. If in doubt, I think holding, get it out. If holding in chambers are, that, are more that way. Than um, than Socrates, I believe. I agree. Because he tries to do two things, and I, I, that's why I would have holding in place of, of, of Socrates any day of the week. Because even though he's still young and likely to make a mistake, it's going to be through good, honest endeavour rather than utter stupidity. I can't argue with that. Ig, better in holding. Which one have we missed the most? I think I think uh, holding. Uh, because uh, uh, I think uh, even he is 23 years of age, but uh, he is a very calm defender. I think if you see, uh, and positionally, I think he's very much better than Socrates. Socrates has the wealth of experience that he had yeah. in the He has played Champions League truly, but if you see holding in that defense, I am I'm an Arsenal fan. I am relieved. I believe, okay, fine, we have a chance. Because if it's mm. Luis. You saw him do, uh, during that Burnley game that at, uh, towards the end of the moment he uh, uh, gave a pass and I was really shocked. I was like, okay, yeah, he pulled off something. But yes, he, he himself knows that he made a mistake there. So uh, if holding comes in, I think the biggest problem with uh, Hector Bellerin, as I said before as well, uh, defensively, biggest problem. Well, I would even cons uh, consider Ainsley continuing in the right back at least for some time, even if Hector comes in uh, in the training. But obviously, I'm dying to see Hector as well because I want Arsenal... Uh, to be the attacking force from the right back. Because when Hector plays, uh, I think 60% uh, chances, you will definitely get an assist from that end. Or something like that, you you will get those crosses and those crosses meet meet the central, uh, uh, the attacking players. The biggest problem is that now, at least in the game against Tottenham, uh, there were many crosses that uh, Seyad Kolasin has, you know, the, uh, it was not meeting Arsenal players. So I think Hector is much better in that, but I would... I'm really missing uh, a guy like Rob Holding. If I believe Rob Holding would have been there last, uh, I think, uh, in the second half of the season as well, I think the story would have been different. Okay, okay. Let me get back into the chat. Again, the chat has just gone crazy here. Uh, I've got one here from Trace Linton again. She's just dominating the chat. We are a top, uh, top team failure. There's no excuse. Why should we keep someone that fails? That's what what was wrong in the first place. That's why the previous coach lasts so long. We need to act like a big club. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. I, I agree with that. We're a big club. We should play our best players against top six teams. I, I can't argue with uh, too much of that. Hmm. Okay. Too often we act like, you know, oh, we're going to Liverpool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. go high. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Terrible mentality coming from the coach. Uh, if we are half decent, we should get top four. Do we truly believe with better players, Emery can win the title over Pep and Klopp? No. And can I say something about Pep and, uh, Pep and Klopp? Yeah. It yeah, sounds like a kids' program, Pep and Klopp. Arsenal could be doing <laughs> Arsenal TV have made a comment. Um, Klopp had three years to get Liverpool where they are. Uh, Pepe also, and so Klopp it oh, just makes me sick. I mean, it's chalk and cheese. Klopp and Pep, they had that length of time, right? But they are they, as soon as you went there, they went into the team. They had a plan and they had a structure. And they were working towards a plan and they had a way of playing. We've had Emery now for 18 months and we still haven't got a 
flipping clue how we're playing. In chops and changes and chops and changes. That's the difference. If the, if the managers come out and say, we can't play this way, or so, if they expect, we haven't got that player or these players to play the, the type of football that I want to play, then we'd all understand. Even the manager doesn't know which way he wants to play. So that is why we've got no faith, or I've got no faith in the guy at the moment, because he's, he hasn't given me a single reason to show him any faith, because I don't know the way he wants to play football. And whenever we go into big games, um, we, bot we don't bottle it. I don't like that expression. But we, we go out defensive trying to stop what they're going to do to us, like I've said before, uh, rather than just impose our game on them. And, yeah, but anyway, that's why I wanted to say... Yes. I don't care whether uh, Klopp or Pep got given three or four years to achieve what they've achieved. It's completely different. I would give any manager that length of time if I knew what his philosophy was and what he wanted to do to get us there. Yeah, I, I'm I, frustrated. Yeah, I, I, you know, king of the Europa League does is not much to hang your hat on, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it, it, <laughs> it, it's about as, you could label me as the king of making microwave pizza and throwing it at my children. It doesn't mean. Uh, you know that much. <laughs> yeah, no. but, but Glenn, you say you say that, but we we have a generation and a half who have not seen Arsenal win any kind of silverware in Europe. The last time was in 1994. Well, that's Firstly, why. So go on. That's why top four is my absolute, you know, uh, okay. limit for keeping an eye Emery, Mister okay. Hooper. <laughs> uh, there's one here from uh, I think uh, I recognize that's my brother. Hi, Glenn. Are you saying that we might have a Ranieri instead of a Klopp? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I'm, I don't want to get too much on Unai Emery's case because he's our manager, and you know, it's, I'm going to support him until he's not, or until we don't make top four. So that's all I'm going to say. Okay, okay. Ig, did you want to no, I'm say saying, something? I'm oh. I think uh, Pep and Klopp sounds much better than Jurgen and Guardiola. <laughs> so, I believe uh, I think, uh, to answer your question, I think uh, uh, it's not about uh, topping Pep and uh, Klopp only a, a, a question for all the Premier League teams, but it's also a question for all the European teams as well, because these two teams have been dominating the Champions League as well. So I think uh, talking about Liverpool, they've they've changed their whole system of recruiting players. They've changed the system of uh, you know uh, managing the players. The management had changed. And uh, even when uh, Coutinho left, they made sure that Barcelona do not come back to get one of their players because they had a vision to go all out and get that European silverware, to get that Premier League. The Premier League title is also one of the things that is prioritized by them. It took, I think, it, it took them uh, two years uh, to uh, finally settle down the forward line. Then again, it took them one more season to realize that uh, you know uh, they need a better goalkeeper, and uh, probably they got uh, Allison. So I think yes, it's a it's a, it is a big big round of process. But uh, as far as the fans go, they need a much more clear direction to which the Arsenal ship is being sailed by Unai Emery. Okay, and, uh, get, and get um, the yeah, and Guardiola is definitely not a kids' program, by the way. That is much more on the adult <laughs> channel. <laughs> yeah, and Guardiola. San Sanjay Joseph, one thing that I noticed that playing with Aubameyang, Lacazette and Pepe is making our midfield options limited. Last season, we played with front, a front two. And then... Yeah, I touched on that earlier. Uh, Pepe played yeah. a bit deeper. Yeah. Uh, Liverpool have got Robertson and Alexander-Arnold who create a lot. Hopefully, Tierney and Bellerin can improve the creativity coming forward. I am extremely confident in that statement. Uh, Rafe Moss Fan Circle says, I'm in Glenn's court here. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know what I said. <laughs> well, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, Klopp had three years to give uh, Liverpool, get Liverpool where they, they are as well. Pe Pepe, I believe, also had the, the same for City. Well, isn't, isn't I think that, he meant Pep. Isn't he that meant Pep. Richard, Richard with the perfect hair? Arsenal TV? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, well, uh, Richard. <laughs> Richard Klopp is a proven winner. Enough said. Enough said. Uh, London Old School. If we don't get top four, for me, Emery has to be shown the door. Glenn, stop nodding yes. The whole world can see you nodding. <laughs> That's like a, it's like a piece of plastic that you have wrapped around your biscuits. If <laughs> that's only there, it's only got one job to hold the biscuits into one shape. <laughs> Once that's gone... I look, like, no I look like a bobblehead doll, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Arsenal I remember didn't give uh, two hoots uh, what team they played. We are the Arsenal. Let's start acting my kids. Yeah, that, that's what I. That's what my motto. I just. Uh, I did, when we were good, when we were good around the Invincibles year, and the couple of seasons before, a couple of seasons after, I've said this before. I didn't even know who we were playing at the weekend because I didn't care because I knew we were going to beat them. We need yeah, to get we, that attitude we need, back. We, we need to get that um, uh, Heisenberg, we are the danger attitude. There you go. There you go. There you go. Listen, I'm going to call this, uh, this Easy Talk Part 2 uh, to an end. Good, because it's hot as balls in here. There you go. <laughs> uh, but before I do, I want to say thank you to uh, all my guests. Uh, IG, uh, Indian Guna, thank you for coming on the second time in a week. Um, go over, make sure you subscribe, and actually check out his channel. There's high-energy stuff over there, so go over there, subscribe. I'll leave the link for his channel in the comments box. So, IG, thank you again for coming on Canon for TV. Can you hear me? Brilliant job. Can you hear me, IG? He can't hear me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Andrew, Dark Square to Wear. Thank you again. It's good to see that you are in better health uh, me this on. time around. Yeah, and uh, I think we're going to be doing Thank some you. collaboration Thanks work, but watch, watch this space. And uh, last but not least, watch um, this space in bed. <laughs> yeah, this, this, uh, a little bit of mayhem was caused by a Glenn all the way just around the corner from uh, New York. Glenn, it's good to have you on the channel. Oh, it was my pleasure. I get to lock the door and leave the family upstairs. Now I can go see what they're all screaming about. It's probably about Canal 4 TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and IG and Andrew, it was an absolute pleasure to be on the panel with you. IG, you did some really great defending of some unpopular um, positions. And I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan. Okay. All yeah, right. Likewise. Thank so there you go. So if you've been wondering who or what you've been watching, you have been watching Canon Fodder, the channel for uh, Arsenal fans all over the world. Clouds away <laughs> on my way. 